this is the Northland Sheep Dairy, and we milk sheep and make cheese. The sheep provide us with income from cheese that we sell at the Ithaca Farmer's Market, and we also sell meat, wool, and sheepskins that are the byproducts of making milk and cheese. I farm with horses and mules to help provide the things that the sheep need to uh, survive throughout the winter. Our primary interest is in uh, a dairy farm, and it's mostly grass-based dairy. So four or five horses covers 40 or 50 acres of haymaking in the summer very easily. I get a deep sense of personal satisfaction out of the time I spend working with the animals. The advantages of working with, with draft horses are several. And the first one that I always have to say kind of as a confession is, it's the funnest thing I've ever done. And I've done a lot of fun things. I've done mountain climbing and rappelling and firefighting, but I would give them all up to work with draft horses every day. The horses are doing the physical work and they're actually working for people. And so my responsibility to them is to provide leadership. My responsibility is to provide communication that tells them everything from where we're going and what we're doing to when it's safe and when it's not safe and how to deal with those situations. And I, and I take all those responsibilities really seriously and commit myself to the animals. And then and they in turn commit themselves to me. I use the horses and mules to mow hay, rake hay, bale hay that we put in the barn for the winter and that feeds the horses and sheep all winter. They plow and cultivate a small market garden. They also do a lot of homesteading activities. They skid firewood, they plow snow in the driveway, and just about anything else I can think of for horses to do. It's real easy to see that the animals can be environmentally friendly. They're taking their hay that you feed them and turning it into compost that you can spread back on the land. They're helping you reduce the amount of fossil fuels that you use on the farm and the uh, gas, the, the carbon dioxide that's being emitted from the engines. In the field and in the forest, they're, they're not compacting the soil as much as with a tractor or other heavy equipment. One of the neat things about working with horses and mules is that they're incredibly versatile. They're really a power source. It's kind of like having four different tractor sizes, from your smallest little tractor to your largest tractor. If I wanted to go out and do a job with one horse, I could cultivate the vegetables, I could skid logs where the trees are really close together, and that one horse would be the only thing that would fit in there and, and do the appropriate task. In haymaking, I use everything from two horses as a team to three horses to four horses. Different machines require different amounts of power and I just come out with a different team hooked together to make the amount of power that I need for a different job. Lots of people are working with one and two horses and one and two horses can do an amazing amount of tilling. Two horses can plow as many acres of market garden as you're ever going to want to sell or take to the market. And they can disc and cultivate those fields. So they're incredibly versatile with, with one and two draft animals. There's a lot of breeds to choose from. Percherons, the Belgians, the Suffolks, those are the larger horses. Then there's halflingers and fjords for people that are interested in a smaller working horse. And there's mules. Mules are a case of personal preference. The advantage of a mule, if you happen to have the personality and temperament to work with mules in the first place, is, th is that they're very effective in the high heat. In the heat of the summer, the mules can really outlast the horses because I'm always keeping one or two mules and horses, I naturally end up mixing them together. I work them together as a pair and I work them together with two mules and two horses. Some people really go after a match team and they want every, uh, every hair color to match and the height to be within an inch. And I've just never been very drawn to that. I like uh, animals of all different sorts. I find that they work well together if they all have a suitable temperament. And so I've always spent my time figuring out different ways to mix and match things together. 
And the other thing that a lot of people are interested in is in oxen. And there's kind of a resurgence in oxen on the farm. The oxen work naturally at a slower pace, which can suit some people that are just getting into working with draft animals. If there's a little bit of intimidation or comfort level, sometimes the oxen is a way for people to approach draft animals. It just feels like a better place to start. And so one of the things I always encourage people to do is find out which of those animals really speaks to you, which one you just enjoy being around, and they'll be very productive for you when you go to work with them. One of the things that horses and mules lead you towards is helping you find an appropriate scale for farming. There's a certain amount that a horse or a team can do in a day. It depends upon whether you want to make hay or whether you want to plow or cultivate a garden. That helps control how many acres you might choose to work on. The scale that allows you to appreciate the land and use the land well and take care of your fertility and all your other interests, horses fit very well in that program.